Good evening, everyone. This is David, and welcome to Week 3 Live Chat in EDT 607. Great to have you all here. We have a full house. That's either a, a good thing or a frustrating thing. It either means that people are really happy and they love to come, or people are frustrated and uh, want to call me names and want to get their problems worked out, and maybe you've even thrown a computer or two across the room. Maybe you've cursed Adobe. Maybe you've used the Lord's name in vain. But I, I know that frustrations are probably built up. I thought what we would do tonight is very quickly go through the assignments, and then I bet there's going to be a lot of questions and a lot of workshopping. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, you should be seeing my computer screen now. Is that correct? Please let me know whether or not you are seeing my computer screen. Yes. And you should be seeing your classroom. Yes, visual. Thank you. Okay, learning outcomes. Another great video by Dr. Juarez. Flowcharts flow and uh, storyboards, you had a first go at a flowchart and storyboard at last week. This week, your storyboard and flowchart should be fully filled out. It should be fully ready to drive the development of your learning object. As you know, we're using the ADDIE model. We are now at the I in the ADDIE model, the implementation. And that's where you are going to actually, let's see, it says here, create and otherwise obtain audio, video, and graphics. The initial web pages are developed and reviewed during implementation. And when the instructional site is put online for the sample end users to try out, that would be you guys as well as me. So your goal this week is to do a rough draft of your site. The optimum, let's go to the, the, to the actual assignment. There are really two kinds of rough drafts that you can do. You can do a rough draft that is just an advanced storyboard, one that is more or less a final storyboard that has the actual image of a video that otherwise would be active if you had turned in an HTML file, has the actual images that you would put in your learning object has the actual language of your learning object. This advanced storyboard simply is a document, such as a Word document, an InDesign document, a PowerPoint document, that is not a hyperlinked document. That is kind of the lowest form of rough draft, but if that is what gets you through the week, then that's what gets you through the week. The other higher level rough draft is an actual working site that you've done in HTML. Now, what you, what you turn in as HTML should have the following components in it at a minimum. Remember, we're talking about one page. You should have at least one example of a hyperlink. And remember that you do not actually paste in the URL, that instead you select text and you embed the hyperlink in the, in the text that has been selected. So you must show one example of you having embedded a hyperlink inside with words. For example, this WinZip right here, if I click on that, that takes us to the WinZip site. And that is an example of text embedded hyperlink. And that's what you want to do. You must also have some kind of navigation for your page named anchors. You must also have some kind of embedded multimedia whether it be Flash, the most common is a YouTube video. If any of you have tried to embed a YouTube video in Dreamweaver CC and it didn't work, that's because you have to take out the S of HTTPS. In the code that YouTube gives you, 
it gives you HTTPS and you have to take out the S before the code will work in Dreamweaver CC. You must have either a table or a list, don't care which one. And then I'm going to be looking at the metadata. The metadata, kind of an odd sounding word, but it is actually very important when it comes to learning objects because the metadata describes the learning object. The metadata is often what search engines look at whenever they robot a web page. They read those meta tags, and those meta tags are in part what help the search engine categorize and rank the web page, describe it. And of course, the meta tags are found in the heading section of the HTML. And also, this is one reason that you definitely want to always enter text for any image. The alternate text for an image is important for two reasons. One is for non-sighted viewers. Their screen reader will read out the alternate text because they can't see the image. Therefore, it should be full, complete, and descriptive. But also, the robots that go about the web the search box also read the alternate text and are also using that to help categorize your site. However, as you know, today, today's search engine optimization is based upon incoming links more than anything else. Now, what you have, if you're going to turn in and, uh, your site, whether it's this week or next week, you have to zip the folder. You have to take your root folder with all of your assets in it, and you have to compress it, another way of saying zip. And then you upload that zip file. There are many zip files that you can, zip programs, I guess I should say, that you can use. I like WinRAR. People also use WinZip, 7-Zip, Hamster. If you're on a Mac, I highly recommend that you use Springy because I am on Windows. And if you use Springy to zip your Mac file, it will allow me to open it more, more felicitously. And here is a video about how to compress your file and to turn it in. So that's basically it. You can either turn in a really highly polished but non-HTML document that represents your one-page site, and it should be finished. It should be well-designed. It should have the actual images, the actual text, the actual whatevers that are, that are in there. It's just not been put into HTML yet. And then your other possibility is to actually do it in HTML. Compress that root folder that contains your HTML, your index file as well as your asset, and upload it. You'll be uploading it to two places. You'll be uploading it to this assignment drop, but you'll also be uploading it to the discussion board. And in the discussion board, we actually get to the E of the Addy model where you will begin with your peers to start evaluating each other's work, your pages. And you're going to be doing that evaluation using the CRAP design principles as discussed in Williams and Tollett. CRP, CRAP, contrast, repetition, alignment, and progression. Proximity, excuse me. I like to say PARK, P-A-R-K, because I don't particularly like the word crap, but uh, you can say it C-R-A-P or you can say PARK, uh, proximity, alignment, repetition, and contrast. doesn't matter. Those are the four principles of document design. And if you go through those four links there, you'll get some good information and some really good examples of documents, what they look like prior to C-R-A-P being designed applied to them and what they look like after CRAP has been applied to them. Whenever you do turn in an HTML folder, excuse me, I should say, whenever you do turn in your zipped root folder that contains your images and other assets, one of the things that I will be looking at is how well you optimize your images, and that means how well you compress them for the web. So it's very important that you go through the 
scheme, the regimen of compressing your images, making them the right size and the right compression depth, amount of data that's in them, right number of bits, bytes, uh, before you turn them in. So there's a video that shows you how to do it in Dreamweaver, and uh, there's also a video that shows you how to do it in Microsoft Picture Manager, which most of you have. Virtually any image manipulation program has a compression algorithm in it. In this case, what you're seeing is the person is, is selecting image first, then that image is going to be opened in Office, Microsoft Office Picture Manager. Then the edit program is going to be selected in Microsoft Office Picture Manager. Click on Edit Pictures, and then you will see the Compression button over on the right, where it says Compress Pictures. And once that is clicked on, you will see Web Setting, Web Pages. So that's a 1.69 megabyte image. That's a very large image. And as you see, it's going to be cut by two-thirds, actually more than that. This is 61 kilobytes. It would be almost like seven eighths. And then you're going to resave it as a make sure you know that the difference between the original image, which was 1.69 megabytes, and now the web image, which is only 61 kilobytes. So I'm going to be looking closely at your images to make sure that they are compressed. And then you are to, after you have uploaded what you're supposed to upload, either level one rough draft or a level two rough draft, you are to critique at least one fellow classmate's design. And that is pretty much it when it comes to your assignments. A couple of things that I've emailed you about and that I want to point out to you. In course resources, I found the latest tutorials I could find for Dreamweaver Creative Cloud because so many of you are using that. However, even these videos, which were produced last year, are now not completely up to date with today's, I downloaded a version of Dreamweaver CC today, and there have been considerable changes between when these videos were made last year and the current version of Dreamweaver CC. They're still highly applicable, but what you're going to need to do to use those tutorials is to use this video right here that I've just emailed you all about. This video, and I did this today, so I was done in a hurry. Please don't judge me on my audio quality. It was done in a hurry. I didn't have Matt's iPhone or earbuds or microphone. It presents to you a standardized a way of setting up your layout, no matter what version of Dreamweaver you have, that looks exactly like the tutorials. So I think that's going to help you solve a lot or address a lot of your frustrations that if you can just make your workspace look like the workspace in the tutorials, that's going to help you a lot. And so that's what this video shows you how to do, how to make your workspace look like that in the tutorials. And there it is right there. Code view on the left, design view in the middle, and then your panels on the right. And then you can't see it here because of the chrome at the bottom here, but the properties inspector at the bottom. I'll, you, I'll play it. You can see the properties inspector down here at the bottom. So if you can just follow this video and set up your workspace like all the other tutorials that you see on the site, I think that's going to help you a lot. I also, with this Dreamweaver Creative Cloud, I looked at how the templates that I gave you are uploading, and there were definitely some issues with the header 
And so I give you some solutions or workarounds for the header. Remember the templates I gave you were designed for CF4, and so you're, you are uploading them in Dreamweaver CC as of December 8th, 2015. Who knows when they made the last update on it. As a result, uh, the header function is working a lot differently. And so I, I kind of gave you some more questions for that. Okay, let's go. Let's get back to the classroom. And I know you're probably going to have lots of questions. Here we are back in the classroom. Please uh, feel free to unmute yourself and let's talk about whatever you need to talk about. Hi, this is Bonnie. Um, I didn't realize about the CC videos, so I didn't look at those yet. So maybe my question would be answered from that. Um, but I was having a hard time um, moving my, um, aligning my um, text based on the uh, two columns that I got and put into CC. For some reason, it has um, the first set and the second set line up flush with the, with the sidebar, but after that, it does a slight indent, and I couldn't figure out how to get to the div box. Is that explained in those tutorials? Because you asked the, Go ahead. It, it scooches over a little bit, and I was trying to unscooch it, but I couldn't figure out <laughs> where that was in the, in the code to do it. Okay. What you would do, Bonnie, is highlight the text that you want to, quote, scooch, and then you would go down. I love the word, by the way. Uh, you would go down to the properties menu and use either the indent or the outdent tool. And where would I see the indent or outdent tool? I see an edit rule button. I see a CSS designer. The indent and outdent, and I will go ahead and share my screen. And I'll do the Creative Cloud version. I would appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We'll highlight some text here. See what we can come up with down here. Here are your centering tools. Align left, center, align right, and fully justified. Now, but I'm in the CSS view right now. If I go to HTML view, I don't know if you can see them right here. Yes. Those, that's, that is outdent, and uh, that, is, that is indent, okay? Okay, excellent. Okay, but you have, you have to be in HTML view to see that. Okay. I will try that. Thank you. Yeah, and that's only one way of doing it. There are, there are other tutorials also explain other ways of doing it, but that's just a, that's just a quick way of, uh, of doing it. I'm in the, uh, as you can tell, I'm in the content. I'll click on that again. Uh, I'm, here is the rule that's being applied. This is the paragraph rule. Here, here is the paragraph rule down here. There you see it. Right. The, class, the class is content. The format is paragraphing. Now, if you want to see how all paragraphs are formatted, you click on the CSS, and that will, that will tell you how all paragraphs are, are formatted. Okay. Okay. I'll go and try that while you move on to the next person and see if I can get it to work for me. Okay, great. Okay, great. All right, uh, Professor Taylor, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, you, I have a uh, liquid website, but as it is on yours there, I have a dark gray cider, the sides on each side of the sidebar. How is it that I can get the, the website to expand to the full length of the browser? The website, have, have you browser tested it yet? Uh, yeah. Okay. So it does, it does what yours is doing. It will expand and shrink up to a certain point. It expands to a certain width, and then it stops expanding, and it just adds that dark gray section behind it. And I want it to expand the whole width of the browser. Okay. Uh, what you're seeing, let me expand this so you can see it. Okay, now, do you see my, where I'm putting my pointer on the dark blue here? Yeah. 
and I'm putting my pointer on the dark blue here, right? Yep. That is called the page background color. Yeah. So if you don't, if, if those borders there are bothering you, you can simply change them to white. Well, it's not, that, oh, sorry, go it's ahead. not that they're bothering me. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm putting an iframe in, and it's it's stuck at a, a small smaller window than I'd like it to be. So if it can expand the whole length of a window, uh, it would actually be much more visible and much more useful. Oh, if you're putting in an iframe and you wanted to expand, you would change the dimensions of the iframe. Yeah, but my iframe stuck with inside a, the the center division. So um, would I just add it outside? I guess. I, I think this is one of those where I might have to see your screen. It sounds like you. It sounds like you're trying to embed a video. Is that correct? No, I'm. I'm actually uh, using another website's graphing calculator, and that's okay. what I'm, I'm. The tool that I want the students to use. So. Um, and so the graphing calculator is wrapped in an iframe tag. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Now, what you need to do is to put that that piece of iframe code with its beginning tag and its ending tag. Yeah. You you need to not put it into a div class because when you do put it into a div class. CSS characteristics of that div, div class are then going to take control of the iframe. Yes. So, uh, and it, go ahead. Uh, it would, maybe it would be easier if I just showed you what was going on. Sure, yeah. Okay, let me stop sharing my screen. And I'm sorry, who was, who was that talking to? It was Kyle. Kyle, okay, Kyle, I'm going to go to you here. Kyle Eaton, and I'm going to make you a presenter. Okay, Kyle, you are a presenter. You can now go up into the top left corner, click on Share My Screen. Top left corner. Uh -huh. It says Edit. It says File, Edit, Share. If you click on Share. Oh, okay. Share. Share My Screen. There it is. Okay, thank you. Okay. So. Okay. So what I have is a uh, graphing calculator right here. Gotcha. And because it doesn't expand the whole length of the screen, this this graphing grid is shrunk to a uh, a smaller portion of the screen and is is not as useful as it could be if it was expanded further. Okay. Can you um, scroll and, up? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, and it's inside the division because I, I or the are they dividers or divisions, um, the div tags. Yeah. Because it's it, I want it next to the content here. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely do. Yeah, you want to definitely get it out of that div tag. That's why it's uh, it's over to the left like that. I mean, it's over to the right, and it's got the space on the left. Is because the, the it, it's, space on the left is the uh, sidebar, right? That's the sidebar on the left side. That's why it's not expanding to the left. No, it's not expanding to the left because it is it is accepting the formatting commands of the uh, div tag controlling the container. So if you go to code, if you go to split yeah. view, just uh, if you would go to split oh, view, split. yeah. And okay. if, if, you would, if you would go up to view, at the very top menu, go to view, click and pull down and take the check mark off of my <laughs> view on left. Somebody needs to mute themselves. Whoever was coughing, could you mute yourself? Uh, that's, that's my wife in the background, sorry. Oh, it's your wife, okay. Hey, sorry. Uh, remember, flu shots give you the flu. Okay, now uh, click on your graphing calculator, so it will hi it will highlight the code. In, oh, you in, want? Yeah, in the design. Go ahead, yeah. and, go ahead and minimize the panels on the right. Just collapse the panels on the right. Uh, that's just how they no, it's um, it's the double arrows on top of that to so we'll collapse. Oh, that's nice. Okay, there you go. Now, now click on that. Click on the graphing. Okay, boom, you're clicked in it. Um, and it's not finding it. Yeah. Let me just find it. Um, what you can do is click right above it, and it'll it'll come up. My iPhone's right here. 
There it is. Okay, I see it. Okay, so scroll up a little bit and let's see what kind of tag you're in here. Up, up. Uh, I, I know it's paragraph. Tag. You got a paragraph tag. Is that paragraph? Uh, tag? I'm, it's between a paragraph tag and a header tag right now. It's inside uh, the division. Um, the tag. I can show you which one it is if I can remember it. Okay. The content. Cool. Content. Gotcha. 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 I used gotcha. one of your. I used one of your templates. Um, so it's got gotcha. all the. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and okay. I, I was trying to fix it, and I couldn't get it okay. to do that. So. Okay. So highlight div class equals content. Highlight that. Copy it. Okay. Copy it. Okay. Uh, hey, you left out an angle bracket. Oh, yeah, angle. I can add it. I'll add that. Mm. Okay. So go down to below your iframe. All right. So. Okay. Hit enter, create a new line. Okay. Copy in div class. The thing you just. Okay. Okay. Now, right, right above the opening bracket of your iframe, put your cursor next to the opening angle bracket of your iframe. So you want me to close you know, the div? Yeah, I want you to close the div and see what it does. Okay, now click in Design View and see what it does. There you That's go. much better. There Thank you go. You. You're welcome. Okay. I'll stop sharing. Okay. Now you can, uh, you can, now that the iframe is free of the div tag CSS, uh, mm -hmm. you, you can use the sizing measurements of the iframe to go ahead and uh, make that uh, iframe a little bit smaller to give you a little bit of padding on the left and the right. Oh, I have it. I have the, the frame set at 100%, so I'll just take it down to 90 or something. There you go. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, this is what week three and week four are all about. Who else? I have a question as well. Okay, who is that? Marco. Hi, Marco. Hello. Um, I think it would be pretty simple on the template that I'm using. I'm The only problem I'm having really is uh, changing the color and putting in, I don't know if the, I mean, one of your videos may show it. I was going to review the videos after this class, but uh -huh. um, the heading of the, because I think Kyle had his, where he had a heading on there, and he obviously uh, changed the color. I just wanted to learn how to do that. Now, are you saying the, the color of the text or the color of the background of uh, the container? I can share, can I share mine? Sure, yeah, and this was Kyle, right? No, I'm sorry, I'm Marco. Okay, here you go, Marco. Okay, Marco, go up to the Share button in the top left. It goes File, Edit, Share. Click on Share and pull down to Share My Screen. Top left button. Okay. All right, here you, here you come. Is it there? Yes, sir, it is. You can go ahead and collapse that panel on the right. Okay. There you go. Just click those double arrows up at the top. Okay, I'm trying to get rid of it. There we go. Sheesh. They're, they're, they're in the very top right. Okay. Uh, I was just covered up by the little, okay, there we go. Okay. Now, what is it? That's a pretty cool background. You, you used a good background image there. That's cool. So you've definitely, definitely been playing around with it. So what, what do you want to change the color of? That header right there? Uh, this, this, this weird green color. Like, I just don't know how to change it. The weird, the weird green color in the links section? Yeah, the links, uh, just the links, the header. I want to change that. <laughs> can, can you give me one at a time? <laughs> okay. You want to change the colors of the, those fry links right there. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, good. All right, I got you. Okay. Okay, so now do you want to change the colors of the text or you want to change the background color? 
the background color. Okay, good. Okay, so click click in them, and that should highlight the uh, the text over on the left. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can find the text over on the left. I mean, the code over on the All left. Right, okay. I'm looking over there. There it is. Div class sidebar one. UL type. Is that it? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. There you go. Div class sidebar one. See it. All right. So let's click on CSS. That's in the bottom left. Oh, okay. All right, and now let's click on div sidebar one, that tag that your pointer was was just on. Um, if, do you see the words? Okay, you just clicked on the CSS button, correct? Yes. If you go up one, two, three rows, there's a line of links there like breadcrumbs that goes body, div container, div sidebar one. Click on the breadcrumb angle bracket, div sidebar one. Now move your pointer down to the gray area. Down to, down to the gray. Oh, there, yeah. right there. There it is. Click on that. Click on it. This one? Yes, sir. There you go. Yeah. Now we can edit that, baby. Now, click on the CSS panel. The button. The C oh, okay. There you go. Now, you just have a blast. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's where you change it all. Okay. Okay? And um, okay. I can do oh, one more thing is the... Uh, I'm trying to put a header in right on the right side of the eagle. Okay. And I just, I'm not having success doing that. Yeah. You know why, why that is? That's because that eagle is yeah. in a bounding box, and it is, that, that eagle is, in effect, your entire header. Oh. That is, in fact, you, so what you need to do is go ahead and show me some room over there. Mm hmm over on the left, so let's go over to your header in, in the code. Go over, okay. to, go over to your header in the code. That's it right here. Okay. Now, I'm, okay, Could, can you unhighlight that? I'm almost blind here, I, I, can't, I can't see. Unhighlight it? Yeah, unhighlight, okay, thank you. That helps me a lot. Okay, just just kind of keep things still for a second. Okay. Okay, put your cursor after the angle bracket slash a angle bracket. Put your cursor after that. Activate your cursor after that. After the angle bracket goes angle bracket slash a angle bracket. Now act activate your cursor after the last the greater than angle bracket. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now type type some words in. Okay. Keep typing some words in. Let's put DF DF DF. Sure. Okay. Now click over on your on your uh, design view. See. Hmm. Can you put it okay, under there? Okay. They're underneath it. Okay. I got you. I got you. Yeah, that's the problem I've been having. Okay. What you're going to have to do is um, take out the image. Okay. And to uh, to take out the image, highlight everything after H. It goes up the top. It goes angle bracket H6, angle bracket. Start highlighting all the way down to the close A and delete that. So from here. Okay. Grab that A as well. A, okay. Just the A? Everything from the last A to the first A. Okay. Everything oh, between okay. the H six tags. Okay. Now hit delete. Okay. okay. Now you uh, take out that stray angle bracket. Okay, now we got everything. Now you can you can actually start typing right now. Start typing right now. Type in some words. Okay. okay. Now you see how those words are appearing there. Uh huh. Okay. Now you go ahead and you can style that header however you want. And after you get that text styled, 
Then you go to insert. You put your cursor wherever you want in that header. And you go to insert, and then you insert an image, and you align the image to the left or to the right. Okay. Now, with your cursor still there, by the H's, go up to insert. Very, at the very top, insert, image. Now try your eagle. Mm. Oh, I see. So it does that. Let's try. What up over here? Uh, eagle. Be fine. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, now, now it's aligned. Look, it's, it's aligned to the right. You can you, you can click on it. You can align it to the left. You can float it to the left or float it to the right, and you, you still have the ability. Like if you went up there to where your H's are, to where your H's. Uh huh. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can you can type something in there. Can you type in some more H's, whatever. Okay. Hi highlight that text. Highlight it over in Design View. Okay. Right. Highlight Design View. Just the text. Okay. There you go. Okay. Now go down to your properties at the bottom. Click on HTML and the properties. Uh, oh, you see that? Yep. Okay. And you, as you can see, you can boldface that that um, that. Thing. Uh, you can you can increase the size of it. Okay. Uh, you can do a lot of things with your text. Click on CSS, and you can do it even easier. Uh, okay. See so uh, now now increase the size to triple X. Where it says size, increase it increase it to triple X. Sorry, I'm not seeing it. Oh, okay. Uh, right here. Yeah. Okay. Double X large. Oh, I see. Yeah, see, so you can you can float that image to the left or the right, and then you can have text beside it in that by doing it in that manner. Okay. Okay. I understand that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. How do I stop sharing? Oh, there you go. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, this is Bonnie again. I tried it on Ingent. And it's still not moving any of the text over. Okay, Bonnie, we'll uh, we'll need to do some screen sharing then. You are you now have presenter privileges. If you're ready, you can go up to share. Okay. We can see what's going on. It starts oh, wow. off okay. Um, right next to the 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 border here, but then this is where it comes up, and you can see where it's no longer indented and I tried where I highlighted it and I went to the CSS uh -huh. I mean I went to the HTML and I went to the unindent yeah. but it didn't move over at all yeah oh okay. yeah you're gonna have to do that in uh, HTML list if you would go up to view and okay. uh, put your code uh, click on um, left view on side a uh, live view on left. Okay. Now, if you would uh, click on a uh, live view. Okay. And can you scroll down and show me where that problem? I'm I'm trying to actually see the problem. Yeah. This is this is it right here. It's yeah. not indenting because you can see up here it there's only like three or four centimeters, and then here it goes like eight or ten. Okay. Okay. Scroll on up. Well, I wish you could make that larger. Scroll on up. Keep on. Okay. Okay. Keep on scrolling. Keep on scrolling. I'm trying to see what's going on. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, Professor Taylor, it looks like she has some of hers in a list and some of them as a paragraph. So and, yeah. that, who is that? Who said that? Kyle. I think I think that's exactly right, uh, Kyle. And she's going to have to change it. To uh, to that. So. Okay. So if I go back and change this out of paragraph and into list, then that should fix that. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And thank you, Kyle, for noticing that. Okay. You, you want to you want to do it real fast? 
Uh, no, I should be able to do it, and I'll, I'll contact you if I can't get it to work, because that'll take a little while. I'm a slow typer. Okay. So do, do you want them in an, uh, if you want them in an ordered list, then you know what to do. You change the, do you change it to um, angle bracket, OL, angle bracket, then you do your list items, open and close list items, and then you do a close OL tag. Right. And that will, that will shift them over. Excellent. All right. Uh, good job, Kyle, for spotting that. Yeah. Um, I did have one other thing. Uh, um, my, I was trying to change the color of the text up here, and I couldn't get it to stick with a solid color. It just kept going back to this gray. Um, any suggestions on that? Uh, that would be the same solution as uh, I gave to, I forget who it was, Okay, with Marco. Uh, yeah, yeah. What for was you. happening with the header? Okay. Yeah. No. Was it Marco who wanted to change the background 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 color of the spry? It was me. I was the length and the header, the background. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, what you have to do is you uh, you click in there. You go to the uh, you go to the area where the code is, and you click on uh, CSS. You have to click on that tag. There it is, div sidebar one. Click on that div sidebar one tag. Boom, right there. Okay, now click on CSS Designer. And that will open up the design panel, and uh, you will be able to change your properties in the design panel there. Because I, I was able to get it to, to say that it was going to go to a different color, but it wasn't changing, and it's not opening anything. Try that again. Okay, well, I'll keep playing with it and see if I can't figure it out. Um, do, you, uh, do you want to change the background color or the, the font color or both? Uh, or, I want to change the, the background color. I wanted to get it from gray to any other color. <laughs> okay. Do you, see, hot pink. do you see on the bottom right over there where it says computed? Now... Those links over there on the, on, the, on the bottom right in that in that selectors menu. Okay. Those when you when you click on those, those are the things that control. Like a hover c controls what color it turns when you mouse over it. A active is what it looks like when you haven't uh, clicked on it. And then there is the yeah. There you go. Now you're getting it. Okay. And you uh, click on properties underneath it. There you go. Now you get them. There you go. Ah, uh, okay. but it. see, it still says that it's going to be that hot pink, but I well then, then click at it. it only click at it and change it. Over. Go go back. You had it there. Click at it and change it. Right, you but went, it's saying that it's going to be the hot pink. But if you look over here, it it only becomes hot pink when I hover over it. <laughs> You went too fast, Bonnie. You almost had it. Okay. You almost had I'll, it. I'll try it again. <laughs> okay. Um, all I had to do, all I had to do, was to get you to click on that pink color chip, and you would have gotten it. Go back, go back to the div, to the div tag. It's in the right under under selectors. Scroll down under selectors. Scroll down till you get the div sidebar. Okay. Boom. Okay. Now. Click. You're going. You're going. To, there. You. <laughs> there you go. See that, see that pink? There you go. Now change that color. Click on it. Change the color. Okay, but I change it. And then it's, but okay, but you changed the background color. Now, now what you want to change is the Hoover color. Now, just listen, Bonnie. Okay. You have you have successfully changed the background color, right? There's no right. longer there's no longer a pink background. Right now, now listen. Now you want to get rid of the pink hover color. So go up to a link hover. You got it. Okay. You, you, I'm on it. I, no, you're on you're on hover a active. Hover. And, yeah, oh, you, that's not the same thing. That's right. You, it has to be alone by itself. A colon hover. You have to you have to focus in on it. 
I see this one that says hover, and I see this one that says hover. Uh-huh. Okay, so you want me to... Click on the plus on to the left of selectors. Well, oh, the wait, plus sorry. to the left of selectors. Okay, let's see if we can find it there. But that's what you're looking for, and that's okay. what's going to change it. Okay, so it'll just require a little bit more playing with. Got it. <laughs> you guys obviously have more experience in Dreamweaver CC than I do. I'm going to have to um, kind of catch up with you guys on that. At this point, it's 10 o'clock, and so you have been here for the full chat. If you wish to leave, you will receive full credit at this point. I just want everybody to know that because, as you can see, doing the screen sharing, uh, it takes a lot of time, a lot of looking, and, and you feel free to take off.